We're going to talk about AsyncJS, an amazing library for working with asynchronous JavaScript. Let's start by creating an empty project. Let's call this async example. And we'll leave all the parameters as, de as default. And this will create a package JSON for us. So let's install the async library via npm. Now we have the LAM module installed. Let's create an index.js. And let's edit that in Sublime. So now we have an empty project. And we are going to write some asynchronous JavaScript using this library. So first we need to require the library. Now what this does is it brings in the async functionalities from the library and we can immediately start using some of its functions. So I'm going to talk about one of the most commonly used functions. It's called async.parallel. So the way it works is you have an array or an object and you push functions to it and then async will execute all the functions together at the same time. So let's do an example with an array. We'll call this array stack. And then let's say we have three functions to execute. Function one. So these take these functions take a callback. And then inside the function definition you perform whatever you need to do in here and in the end all you have to do is return a callback with the first parameter being the error object since we don't have any error we'll just pass null to it the second parameter is the result of this function that you want to keep at the end so we'll call this the first function Results. And that's one function. Let's copy and paste two more. And we'll call this one function two. And this one function three. So now we have three functions and what we should do is push those functions into the stack array. So we do stack dot push function one. And then we'll just do the same for the next two. And now our array will contain our functions. Now we should use async to execute all three of them together in parallel. This function takes an array as a first parameter, we'll pass in our stack, and then a callback function, the first parameter is the error, and the second parameter is the results. I'll talk more about that later, but for now, let's log results and see what happens. So let's execute our index.js with node. So as you can see, the result is an array containing the results from our three functions. Basically, it adds, it puts all the results from each function into the array and at the end you will have it available in this results variable. Now if any of these re returns an error, let's see what happens. So instead of returning null, let's pass an error object and then 
as the value will pass in null. So let's run the program again and see what happens. It stops. So when it encounters an error, it stops executing all the rest. Now async parallel can do this is one way of doing it in which the result is a array containing the values of these functions. Let's do an example with, with an object. So async is very flexible. It also takes an, an object as a stack. So let's do stack equals an empty object. Now the way we do it is, let's do an example. Let's say we want to get information about a user. So you will do stack dot get user name equals a function. It takes a callback. Now here you perform the action, either an AJAX call or whatever you need to construct the username. So var username equals Bob. Once you finish your calculation, you simply returns it in the same way that as this one. So return. There's no error. You return the username. You basically do the same thing. Now this time you may want to get the user age and then the gender now what this does is it builds the stack object with these functions. Now you can do the same thing by passing that into the async parallel function. Now in the real world you will log the error, check for the error. If there's an error then you simply just log out the error and returns it. Now if there's no error, we can look at what the this should be results. We can look at what the result is. So simply type results and let's see what that does. Nothing. So we missed something. So the problem here, let's see what the problem is. I have an object called stack. Ah, the problem is, I'm saying return here, this should be callback. So now, if you run it, I guess you... So, the result is this. Basically, it builds the object. So, the get username, which will be this one and then the age will be this one and then the gender will be that one 
So it sets the result return value to whatever this object key is. So there you go. This is pretty cool. It's really useful when you want to do multiple functionalities, function calls at once, and it will really help you make your programs simpler to read and reason about.